some history. United Way, we used to do um, brochures, right? And that's about the extent of our marketing. That's how a lot of companies would do it. Um, you produce a product, and then you go to marketing and you say, any ideas? You say, could somebody produce a poster, a flyer, a brochure? And then they produce it. So very, that's a very traditional model. But how do people actually consume content today? Any, who, anybody has a guess? Or how did, they, how did they used to do it? How did people get their information back 10 years ago, five years ago? Newspaper TV. Mm -hmm. What else? Email. Email, yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Face to face, right? A lot of things happen face to face. Uh, and how do you think that has changed today? How do people know what's going on today? Facebook, phone phones. Mm-hmm. So yeah, all the social media. Social media, yeah, sure. So what's the difference though between social media and face to face? Social media, you know, so it used to be face to face, I tell you something, and now you know, but what's the difference from face to face to social media? When a consumer chooses what to engage in, I mean, you're standing in front you tell them to there. Right. So they get the choice, they have the choice of what they're yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's still some connection, right? So um, people people choose who they talk to on social media, and people also choose to who they talk to in person. Uh, but some of the things we'll talk about is how do you amplify your message um, through social media, through the web, through whatever. People say uh, Christoph is really into social media, and that's that's not a bad perception that people have. But and and I'll kind of show you some of our strategies. Uh, we're not just about social media. It's just the first thing you see. You just don't see the brochure that we hand out in October, for example. Um, just to kind of give you an example how things have changed with social media. Um, see if I can open the right screen here. Um, I've blogged about this, so it's okay to share with everybody. Uh, I help with the RAGBRAI website, cedarapidsragbrai.com. And you may remember that has been on the news all the time, right? It's on TV, it's everywhere. And this is just a um, quick look at one week of reefers. So everybody know, does everybody know what a reefer is? So, so you'll see where people came from to your site. So as you can see, 180 people, computers or whatever, maybe there's some, some duplicates in there, came from Facebook. Right, so, so I mean, social media. People choose to engage with us. 22 from Twitter, 21 from KWWL, KGAN, KCRG, uh, KCRG, and then also United Way and Google. So, huge change, right? I mean, if you hear people talk about um, you want to have an article in the newspaper, that's where you reach everybody. And I'm not saying you don't want to be in the newspaper. I think you you do, but it's 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 not the only avenue where you connect with people. So some of those things are really changing. So it changes all the time. And it's really overwhelming if you're trying to keep up with everything. And you really can't. So I'm not going to talk about the latest programs, the latest social networks. I'm, we'll talk about how do you actually stay ahead of the curve and how do you make it work for your organization. Because if you could sign up for a new um, social network like every couple days. There's always something new. And um, most of them are really not worthwhile f um, hopping onto right away for most of you, even though some might be. Um, Facebook, I think last number I saw had one third of Iowans are on Facebook. So if you have to pick a social network, uh, Facebook probably would be it. Um, you know, LinkedIn and Twitter are the next two. Um, very little interaction that we even get off of Twitter. And if you look at the numbers from Ragbri, Facebook is obviously the um, the leader there. So, what it, does it mean you only do social media? Absolutely not. Really what you need to do is you need to think about how are you going to share your message. So the way we look at it at United Way, we use this content plan here. Let me see if I can open it up for you. So when people say Christoph is really into social media, that's great. Good to know that that's the perception. And you know, I'm on there all the time. I always get something to say. But really what we're trying to do, we're breaking it down like this. And um, I'll kind of walk you through it and maybe you can, if you have any questions, feel free to, um, to ask. 
Um, uh, first of all, we look at our audiences. So we have a general interest audience, which is probably by far the biggest audience of, because everybody, you know, why do people give to United Way? Because they care about our big picture look at things. Um, yes, there, we have focus areas, but that's why a lot of people give. So you have to figure out who, who is your audience? Who, why do people give to you? Why are people engaged with you? Then we break it down into um, five, four subcategories and one that's kind of standing on its, on its own. So the subcategories are um, health, education, income, and volunteering. So we actually have people working, as you probably know, on those areas, health, education, income, volunteering. And then we also have an audience of people who can give and they don't want to hear anything about those topics. Does that make sense? They give to United Way because they can and they don't want to they don't want to hear about the impact. Does that make any sense? So, those are so we have to first of all have to know who are our audiences and that's the first thing I think everybody has to figure out. Who are you trying to talk to and 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 how and and who are those people? Then there are these delivery mechanisms. Um, by email. Email lists are dead, right? Everybody agree? Absolutely not. I mean, we get so much bang out of our buck for emails. Unbelievable. You send an email, people actually open it, they click on stuff, they reply, have a question. Uh, email by far is not dead. As much, and remember, I care about social media. That's all I care about, right? I don't. But, but email, I mean, email is not dead. Absolutely not. Um, events. Events have a huge impact when you do them well. Um, bringing people together, um, not making it too long, make it, you know, making it interesting. So events definitely have a place. Um, doesn't have to be something big. Um, some events can be really small. But what's the message you're trying to get across? So everything comes back to the message. It's not about do I have a Twitter account and never update. What's the message you want to share? Um, printed materials. I rather not have any printed materials ever. Don't give me a brochure, it's just going to go on recycling, probably, for me. But how many people in here like printed stuff? Anybody? Right? Absolutely. So it's so you still need printed stuff. There are a lot of people. It's that old old discussion, you know, you, you hear I came out of the news business, newspapers are gonna die, right? Newspapers are going away and nobody wants print paper. And I I say, yeah, I don't read the yes, I don't I will read it online. But you know, I go to other generations and I say I say to them, I read it online and they say, Are you kidding me? I want to read the paper. I like to hold the paper. Right? So it doesn't, it, you need all those channels. You can choose. Um, you just have to kind of figure out how to, um, how to disseminate the things. Um, video, um, that's kind of a hard one to do because you don't want to produce videos that aren't good. That actually hurts your brand, but videos um, are one thing. And what happened here? That's the end of the discussion. <laughs> um, and this is the web, right? This is things online. Uh, we'll look at our website in a little bit. Um, the web is really important. Um, do you get? Do you, do you know who runs the web? This is recorded, so we'll post it. Hopefully they won't see it. You know, Google really runs the web. I mean, we have so many people coming to our website, um, searching for things. When you throw out all the United Way terms, people are searching for the obesity rate in Lynn County. I mean, whatever community impact is working on, people end up on our site. So it's important to have something online that people can find if they're not part of your network yet. Um, the purple cow, who has had trouble listening to me and you've been looking at that purple cow the whole time? Anybody? No? You can admit, that's okay. I, I showed this to the board of trustees and some people raised their hands. Um, so what's the purple cow? Anybody know? So um, the purple cow is a um, term coined by Seth Godin. He's, uh, I don't know how you describe him, but he's kind of a marketer kind of guy, pushes the envelope on things. And the purple cow is, what's the next big thing that you can create, right? Everybody has a black and a white cow, um, and nobody actually looks at the black and white cow anymore because you've seen thousands of them, especially when you're in Iowa, right? But would you pay attention if you see a purple cow in the yard over here, in the, in the, in the field? Absolutely. So now, if, what if you see 2,000 purple cows? 
gets old, right? It's like a black and a white cow. So right now it's a purple cow. Once you invented the purple cow, or when there is the, the next purple cow, there will be a green cow, blue cow, that sort of thing. Have you heard any statistics on the number, percentage of emails that are ever open? I, the last stat I had heard was like 15% mm -hmm. are only open. It's different by um, by industry. Okay. For nonprofits, it's I think the average is about 20%. Okay. So if you can if you can get 20 people to open your email, um, that's um, that's pretty good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the what the stats are for other uh, other industries there. Are there any other questions on this graphic that didn't make sense? Is it one face to face? Yep, face to face. Mm -hmm. No questions? Okay. All right. So when you do this with people, how long do you think you have time to actually get their interest? Are there any, I mean, what are the, do you have any guesses? How long do you have to draw somebody in? Six seconds. Okay. Any other guesses? It's four to five seconds. Mm -hmm. That's pretty close, I think. Um, you know, I, one thing I heard one time, it was like 30 seconds. I don't know how many years ago that was. That's really probably kind of old. Uh, I think it was nine seconds at one point, and we're actually going off three seconds. So if we can get your interest in three seconds, um, you know, we'll probably won't get it. So that's something to keep in mind as you are writing things, as you're starting an account on Twitter, Facebook, wherever, if you, when you update your website, how do you phrase things? Um, who has sent a news release that says, um, United Way invites you to our event? I mean, pick your own organization, but something like that. Your organization invites you to this event. Anybody? I'm the only one on camera, so they won't see who raises their hand. But, I mean, right, you've sent that before, probably. I mean, I, I've seen him when I was a reporter. Do you think you get that reporter's um, attention in the three seconds? Right. So that's something to start thinking about. I mean, we won't go into all those details on how to learn some of those things, but the first thing to learn those things is to just the, just the um, awareness to know um, what you have to do. Um, so you have three seconds. So the way we break it down, I don't know if we have an extra copy of the, do you mind if I borrow this? So here's an example, and this is one of our first versions that we created last year when I started here. And when you look at this flyer, now this has a lot of stuff on it too when you turn it over, um, but as you can see, we break it down by like three levels of content. So level one are the people that do this. They say, <coughs> United Way helps support people. Okay, got it. Who are the people? This guy, this guy, I don't know. Okay, please consider giving. And that's all they're going to do. Would you give just by, look, by doing that? Mm, probably not. Maybe. So what you need to strive for is that's what a lot of people will do. So then, what we call level two, what they do, they actually read these little articles, the little blurbs, um, and they read the back. Other people just look at the pictures. And then the last level, which is really unusual, um, they actually will type in the link and watch the entire video. So that's something to keep in mind. How do you get people's attention right away? Um, how do you get them to? Um, how do you get them to invest in whatever you're doing? So would people give to United Way just by seeing this headline one time? Probably not. But you see this headline, and then you see another, you see a tweet over here, you see a Facebook update over here, you see something else, and you just say, United Way, United Way, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's the totality of things. So it seems really kind of awkward when I think back of how I used to produce things at the newspaper. You do a big article, and you think everybody would read it. And a lot of people don't, because you have to jump, and you have to do this, and another thing. So, you know, it's the it's sort of totality of things, that people consume things like that. You see United Way helps people, supports people. Then you see something else later on. You see something else here. You see somebody sharing something on Facebook. So you have to kind of think about those things. Um, does that make sense so far, or yes, no? Um, if you're, okay. 
So how have we changed? Um, so the other thing we know is people will only consume what they care about. So that's what you need to figure out. Why do people care about what you want to share with them? Um, I don't know if this is the official term, but I call it the Fox News Channel syndrome. You know, people walk, watch Fox News because they care about what they talk about. So that same thing getting in front of people, what do you want to share? Why would people listen to you? Um, how has United Way changed? How do we engage differently with, with people? Um, we always have something to say. I mean, not always, but a lot of times. Uh, you may have seen on KCRG.com, somebody, there's a story on homelessness. I'm very surprised if one of our community um, building managers did not go on there and left some kind of comment that either explains somebody's misstatement or moves the message forward just to kind of have something to say about it. Uh, a lot of times we have, you know, we do our own columns. Has anybody seen um, Judy Stuffel? She's had some columns in the Gazette lately. Um, so you always constantly have to talk about what it is you do and why it's important in all these different channels. Um, you know, be an expert. Be an expert at your topic. Um, why do people get involved with other organizations? Because they know this organization is an expert at this, right? I mean, how many, does anybody know how many fundraising agencies there are in just in the area? Quite a few, probably. How many do we know? I don't know. A lot. A lot. And do you have Michelle, how many in our distribution list? Uh, as far as organizations, 330 members of Stride chapters for the same organizations. So maybe 200? Yeah. Right. So 200. And some are touches right. and right. based. And yeah. So let's say, may, let's say even 100. I mean, a huge competition, right? So you have to take it beyond. Give to me because you can give to me, right? Um, and the one thing we see, especially with the next generation up, people give to a cause. So, you know, um, you may give to United Way because you care about what United Way does when it comes to homelessness. Um, so that's, it's, it's really something to think about. Um, what are you an expert in? Um, how do you make the shift? You're not going to learn it in the next 30 minutes, but maybe just some things to think about. Um, define your brand. What's your brand? Anybody want to share? Do you know what a brand is? Yes? No? So a brand is what people in the public would say about your organization when you go ask them and say, what does United Way do? Or, you know, whoever. Does anybody... Anybody want to chime in what your brand is? Yeah, Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. We provide housing. Mm -hmm. Decent and affordable, super decent and affordable housing mm -hmm. um, for those who wouldn't qualify mm -hmm. for a regular loan. Mm -hmm. And is that what the public would say if I were to ask them? Good question. Mm -hmm. yep. a, lot of times, a lot of times people think Habitat just gives houses away. Right. So they would make the connection to housing. Yeah, housing. Definitely. Mm -hmm. How about anybody else? Yeah. Rich Haven Pregnancy Support Center would mm -hmm. be a place to come before, during, and after pregnancy. And that's you, that's what the public would say? We're working on it. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's Davey. Uh, we're the men's shelter. Mm -hmm. And you think the public would say that? Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's what the public would say. Okay. Or more than just a shelter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Anybody else? <coughs> so, I know I'm kind of putting you guys on the spot, and I said, you know, would the public say that? And I know you said, uh, yes, they would, but you guys were kind of, you don't know, right? You really don't know. And um, that's important to, to kind of get an understanding of if the, if the public understands it. What is, what's United Way's brand? Anybody? No, that's our organization, so go ahead and throw it out, whatever comes to mind. Not Hillary. <laughs> Strengthening lives in our community. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Anybody else? United. Mm -hmm. Okay. What does that mean? Work together. Okay. Any other guesses? 
I mean, those are good answers, obviously. And I'll show you our new um, tagline. We don't call it a tagline, but kind of what we're trying to do. Um, I gave a presentation one time to middle school students, and we're not going to go through this here, but what I did is I put up logos of, of big brands like Coca-Cola, um, GoDaddy, um, some other things, and I asked them, what comes to mind, Apple, when you look at this logo? And people said, Coca-Cola, they said, it tastes great. I said, oh, anybody want to drink a Coke right now? And they said, absolutely, right? I mean, are, are you getting that feeling right now and I'm not even showing you the logo, <laughs> right? I am kind of am. So um, I think GoDaddy, everybody said, that's like the race car driver, I think. <laughs> um, so, but there's some connection, right, just by looking at it. And these are middle school students, and I'm not, you know, I'm, this is just their perception. And I put up the United Way logo, and any guesses what they said? The YMCA. YMCA? Nope. Exercise, the 60, whatever, the NFL. Some people did say the NFL, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the most telling answers was, um, well, maybe not the most telling, but one of the telling answers was, I think that's a bank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, see, in that, pr in that kid's mind, all they know is that their, his parents probably gives money to United Way. And that's, that's where it kind of ends, right? That's, that's how they know. But remember we talked about you have to pass, move past. Um, who can you give money to? I mean, why do you give money to people? So how do you brand that message? So we got some work to do there, but our brand, as it stands right now, our tagline, if you wish, we don't have a tagline, is this right here. Let me show you. Is this showing up okay? Yeah. So what we do is we help people. Now that goes a lot deeper than that, obviously, but um, what we've done at United Way is we've gone through training with staff uh, on how to share this message. So when you have all those pictures below, um, when Ashley Ernst talks about, she's our women's leaders um, vice chair right now, chair next year, uh, when she talks about helping people, her message should be different than when I say I'm helping people. Does that make sense? Because I may care about something else. You know, I may volunteer for a partner agency and I may talk about that aspect of how we help people. She talks about um, how somebody ran into, has, have you guys heard this story? She went, somebody ran into her, she had a Live United shirt on and said, oh my God, United way they they helped me get some kind of medical service I don't remember what it was and it was you know they the two connected so her story is very different um, you know Mary Van um, I don't remember her name Mary um, she was a little too Ann Olson her story is very different from what I would share so we help people that's what we want the brand to be I think you picked a really good tagline mm -hmm. that was the first thing that came to mind mm -hmm. so what do you think of I mean, that's a very simple version. Yep. So, um, have you seen it in any of our materials? I don't think so. No, and we, we probably won't put it in, our, in, in any of our materials like this. So, but when you look at our stuff, when you look at the flyer, when you look at anything we produce, you should get the message somehow, sometimes we're closer than others, that we help people without saying we help people. Do you know how it's stronger when you show something as opposed to just saying? It's like, you know, I could be up here and say, hey, by the way, I'm the expert at social media, right? And you believe that? I mean, you could, potentially, but it's much stronger, you know, if Nancy comes up here or somebody else and says, this guy is an expert, not even expert, but this guy is always on social media, always got something to say, and when you frame it that way, right, it's a lot, a lot stronger message. So, um, do you think it's odd that we don't have a tagline? No? Any guesses? No? Okay. Well, sometimes people think it's odd that we don't have a tagline. So I just, um, um, maybe I just run through some of the taglines of some well-known companies and we'll see if anybody can guess them, okay? Um, Adobe, anybody know what their tagline is? And I looked this up. I mean, it's actually, it, the source on this is taglineguru.com. So I'm not just making them up on the fly here. Taglineguru.com. So, Adobe, any guesses? Anybody? 
Adobe is better by Adobe. Bank of America, national brand, right? Any? And usually people don't get these, and that's that's kind of the point, honestly. Uh, higher standards, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. That didn't show up on here, but I, that's what I was thinking too. Um, they have. Did somebody say McDonald's? Mountain Dew. That's right. See, so one. I mean, one out of four. Uh, Pepsi actually has four. Who can tell me one? Um, no, the closest, well, they all have generation in it, kind of. Not all, but two out of four. Right generation. Mm -mm. Taste of the new generation. And they also have come alive, you're in the Pepsi generation. So they, ha they use the word generation. Um, Pepsi hits the spot. Pepsi for those who think young. So they all kind of circle around generation. But, but you see the point, right? Nobody remembers these taglines. I mean, Live United, actually people, and that's not even a tagline. Well, maybe it is, kind of. But yeah, people do remember that, kind of. But it's, you know, it also is not the true tagline, in my opinion. So how do you get to build your brand? Any ideas? So here's what we do. We, um, we're the marketing department here at United Way, but really you could just, um, you could um, name us the storytelling department. We tell stories about United Way. Um, and officially this is called, uh, some people call it content marketing, uh, some people call it branded journalism or brand journalism. McDonald's actually started that in 2004. And what it means is that you tell stories about your organization and share them with people um, on, on just about any platform where you can reach them. Um, does that mean that you will ever see um, an expose from a marketing department about their own organization? Probably not, right? I mean, we're not reporters, but a lot of the same principles apply that you, you know, you tell the story honestly, you share it, um, you, you share it in an interesting way. So, it, you know, it's kind of tricky to do as, as you're starting it, but, but that's what people respond to. Um, so tell stories that matter. Um, become known as the organization that that does whatever you do and it you know it's really it takes some practice to to do that um, connect people with relevant information I talked about earlier how people come to our website when they they search for things other than United Way and we just connected them right we don't even ask them for money at that point I mean we have the little donate button on the right but they're coming for us for information um, probably about 80 to 90 percent of people that contact us through our website ask about this thing, about this program, part of our organization, um, of, of one part of our organization. Any guesses what it would be? 80 to 90 percent of people that email us through our website ask about this. I mean, they don't know that's what they're asking about, but any guesses? Nope. That's easy enough, I think. People just click on volunteering and then you search. Um, most responses, most emails to the website um, are actually 211 related. Now, they don't know that's what they're asking about. They have a question about some issue or some, some, some resource, so it's really something they should have called 211 for. So I'm kind of seeing, you know, people are coming there already to ask for help. So it's like the other side of the coin, the people that are looking for help, they're, they're coming and asking. Um, but they're ending up there because they're, because they're searching for something that's um, relevant. Um, increase brand awareness, you know? Just being in front of people. Do you know how people buy things? Like, why do, why do people buy, why do people drink a Pepsi as opposed to a Coca-Cola when they're at a restaurant? Any idea? Exactly, because whatever's in front of you, right? So now we have people who really, really care about our mission or anybody's mission, and they won't, you know, they'll stick with you and everything, but there's a huge market out there of people who really don't know. They go with whatever's in front of them. Who would leave a restaurant if they didn't have Coke and you um, wanted to drink Coke as opposed to Pepsi? Anybody? 
Very few people, right? Every once in a while, somebody raises their hand. There's, there actually are people that do that, but um, but very few people. See, so most people, what they do, whoever's in front of you, that's that's how they make their decisions. Um, so something to think about. How do you get in front of people all the time in a meaningful way? So if they were to give you Pepsi and that's the only thing they serve and, and every time you drink a Pepsi it tastes, you know, it doesn't taste very good, you know, you probably wouldn't go to those restaurants anymore, right? So it has to have some positive, um, positive interaction there. Um, action steps you can take right now. Who has a, what you would call a dynamic website? Who knows what I mean when I say dynamic website? Okay, so when you look at our website, let me pull it up here. So when you look at our website, when you it used to be really static. It had the same picture on the front. Uh, most people would go to the how to contact us page and that's the only thing you ever do. So what we changed is much more dynamic, meaning more things going on. So most websites, and this is actually no different than news business, which is kind of interesting to me. Uh, same in our business, maybe if you look at your stats, I wouldn't be surprised if they're very similar. Most people go to the front page and that's where they stay and they read the headlines. And then some people click somewhere, go to something else, and then some people click even further. Does that sound familiar? What we talked about earlier, level one, two, and three, applies here too. So, um, but what people do, they come here and they look at this. Now, we're not a newspaper, we're not, a, we're not trying to be one, but we're trying to share stuff we think people care about when they end up here. So when you, when you have this on your computer, and there's always something new every time you get here. Once you start wondering, oh, there's always something new. Maybe I come back more often. That's exactly what we're seeing people are doing. So you're starting to kind of engage doing that, uh, engage with people in that manner. Um, we use WordPress for our platform. I don't know if anybody has used WordPress here. I think it's like 16% of US websites now use WordPress, half of the top. 100 or maybe maybe it's only the top 10 websites in the nation are using it really easy to use every single person in our office has access to it um, they all update their own stuff um, we do get an email when there's something posted and we do read it but it's really easy I mean it's 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 so easy to set up so as you can look at this what we're doing here we actually broke it down uh, there are videos you can watch them right there you don't have to go anywhere and then we broke it down by um, by our impact areas so right for the people that only want to read the headlines they don't even have to go anywhere they can just scroll down and there's like 20 headlines they can just kind of um, skim over do people go down and read it they do people people spend their majority on their time on the front page um, I think it's like maybe five minutes. So what we do, the way we keep metrics, um, we look at the overall picture, but we're really, we're in a local economy, even though we're in a global economy, but you know, we solicit people in Cedar Rapids and, and the other five counties, Lynn County. So we only look at people from our areas and most of them spend about five minutes on the site on average. And uh, I think it's like, they actually look at three pages on average, but most of them don't. Gazette Online is also a WordPress site, very advanced, just like yours. Which one? Gazette Online. Is um, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, same system. So it's really easy to, to set up um, and use doesn't mean you have to look like this. It doesn't have to look like this. There's so many options out there. Fairly cost efficient. Um, engage online, right? Engage on social media um, in a meaningful way. And it's really something you just kind of have to play with. It's going to take time to think about. Now, I'll just give you an example how hard it is to actually do consistently. Now, I've been I've been writing publicly for 
14 years. So I've done it for a few years. And when I started here, I came from Source Media Group. And people kept asking, oh, why did you go to United Way? Weren't you invested in Source Media Group? And et cetera, et cetera. And I said, of course I'm invested in Source Media, but here's why I went here. So I explained all this and you know um, how everything kind of comes together. And I got so many questions, so I finally blogged about it on my blog. I just said, here's why I went there. Read it, stop asking me. I didn't say that, of course, but, but here you can read it. And the next day, Lois, my boss, Lois Bunce, comes in my office and says, hey, I saw your blog post. And I said, I and? <laughs> right? I knew there was nothing in there that was negative, it was very deliberate, the words I chose. There was not a thing in there that was, that even could be construed to be negative. But my first reaction still was, and what's wrong with it, <laughs> right? So think about that, and especially if, if you haven't been a writer, if you haven't been any, you know, producing videos, if you end up doing that, there will be that hurdle to kind of get over, um, even if nobody gives you negative feedback if that makes sense. So it's going to take some time getting used to, uh, especially if you do it on your own. Now, we probably won't have time to go into this, but I actually think there's a new career track um, in organizations. You know, people say, well, who, can, who has time to do all this stuff? And you don't have time to do all this stuff. So I actually think at some point, organizations will have to hire somebody to focus on that, right? Kind of how you have somebody focusing on fund development or, or whatever. I mean, somebody has to do it. Um, communications training. We have, I mean, everybody at United Way has gone through training, uh, numerous hours of training. And um, one of the reasons we did that is because we know it takes time. Uh, we also changed our policy quite a bit. It used to be that Lois Buns was the only person speaking publicly for United Way. Do you may remember those times? Lois would be the only person ever to speak to the media. If we had a guest editorial, it would come from Lois. Lois was the spokesperson. So the way we change that today is Lois is hardly ever the spokesperson. Um, and in fact, we'll get to this in a second, you almost don't want her to be, because what we did is we changed the policy that everybody can speak about their area of expertise. So if I'm the two-on-one manager, I should talk about it. And I don't even have to, once I have enough training, I should be comfortable talking to a reporter. I should be able to, to write a little article. You know, they can still ask for help, but everybody can talk about it, because Remember we talked about face-to-face -face earlier? Face-to-face -face is just as strong as, um, you know, putting it on your website. In fact, sometimes you reach more people face-to-face -face than you reach when you, when you post something, depending on, on your audience. So we did the training with them. People can talk about it. Um, it's up to them if it's their subject, th their area, if they're the expert. Um, when, there's, when there are crises, a crisis communication, when we're getting to that stage, um, has to come through Lois and marketing. So how do we define um, crisis communication? Anything other than routine, <laughs> right? I know, that's fairly vague. So what do we, what do we mean? Um, it's really, so every time the authorities are called, you know, if it's a personnel matter, that's kind of a good rule of thumb, if, you know, if, if, it's, a, if it's a true emergency. Uh, training, that's kind of something we went through. Um, execution, it's something we learn every day. Um, something works, we try it again. Something doesn't work, we kind of scrap it and, and move on. And that's really important because you can't stay, you can't keep up with all the new stuff. You, you can't. You have to kind of define what you want to do and then pick what works for you and, and try to go where, where the most masses for your audience. Um, doesn't necessarily, maybe it's not Facebook for your organization, maybe it's something else. I don't know, but that's kind of how you have to look at things. Um, so execution, the last thing here, that's, I mean, it takes time. How do you, um, you know, people need to think about how do you explain what they want to explain to the public. Lots of training involved, lots of back and forth, but it's, you know, to, to share your message, you, you have to practice it. It used to be, and this was very frustrating for me sometimes when I was a reporter, 
you know how you would call the marketing person and then you'd ask them a question and then they would go to the other person and they would say um, here's the question and then they give you the answer for that exact question and you go back to the reporter and then you say here's the answer and they say oh but how about this oh well I don't know I didn't ask so now you go back to that person why right why do this in fact it just frustrates about every single person in that um, in that um, alignment there any questions right on time Perfect. You guys, this is your opportunity to ask questions of Christoph or maybe um, others, if there's anybody in the room that has had some experience, um, you know, doing doing stuff online or things like that, you can share that. That would be really helpful, I think. So, that's a good question. Yes. Do you, or how would you incorporate donor videos into uh, some type of segment population? Do you on your website? Mm -hmm. Do you have donor stories? That, you know, you have it really helped me achieve this line. Yep. Yep. So what we do is um, how do you, how do you include donors? So everything we do, we try to start with video, right? So if we have so Ashley was an example. Ashley Ernst talked about her story running into the person actually using the services. So we did a video of Ashley. Then we transcribed the video. We published the video in here. You know, we used the video in other places. We showed it at events. Um, we showed it on the website. We might include it in companies for the next campaign but then we also transcribe the video and then we use the transcript for other things so for example um, newsletters uh, I think her story was actually I don't know if the Gazette ran it but it was submitted to the Gazette as a guest um, letter to the editor so absolutely everything we do we want to start we want to post here in fact if you look you wouldn't know this today but when you look at the site a lot of our videos that we will show during the campaign next year they're already on here um, they're just not titled you know what they will be titled in the in the fall so yeah how many employees do you have the United Way uh, I think there's about 20 ish 25 maybe total yeah um, so the, the marketing department we have a video editor on staff who who does all that yeah. mm -hmm. Yes. I've had um, staff talk about when to post on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Some will say, oh, it's got to be right at midnight. Others say, after lunch, or never do it at midnight. So I'm just kind of wondering if there's any standard yeah. out there. Uh, there are so many standards out there I've kind of given up to actually pay attention to all the studies um, there there are so many studies out there on when to post Saturday mornings in the evening um, you know over the lunch hour um, Saturday mornings is a good time which is really a struggle for marketing departments because they all work Monday through Friday so they don't want to work Saturday mornings even though it takes like two minutes but what we do we actually just kind of started to ignore all those studies and we just we post when we have something to say you know so if, if I'm sitting at home on the couch and I'm like oh and you know I just saw an email come through and I'm like oh maybe I should just post this over here I just post it I don't think oh I should hold this until tomorrow because you know what I do tomorrow I'll forget about it <laughs> so we just post it when when it's ready when we have something to say even if it's 10 o'clock at night mm -hmm. you don't care yeah I just post it I just found that to be much easier um, we actually tested and this is not social media but on our email newsletter we, we've been kind of testing when to send it and there's virtually no difference if you send it at 6 p.m. or if you send it at 9 a.m. or if you send it uh, even Saturdays perhaps well maybe we haven't done Saturdays but um, there's no difference in fact at 6 o'clock we sent it at 6 o'clock one time and right away I think in the first 30 minutes like 7% open it right then and most emails we have are work addresses so do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. yes so who, who has the authority to post on your uh, United Way staff. Anybody. So kind of like your website, everyone's mm -hmm. responsible for their yep. content. Yep. So they, anybody can post on your Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to have the training though, to kind of, so you're on the same page. Um, because it can get messy when you have too many people having access and there's actually stories out there where people were like multiple administrators answered a question and they didn't pay attention so that's something we talk with staff about if you reply to a question make sure nobody else replied you know so it doesn't 
It doesn't have the same answer twice. What other kinds of things do you train your staff when you're talking about marketing? Mm -hmm. um, communications mostly. Um, we also have, we had a class on online communication because as we know that's a little different from face to face. Right here you can't actually see um, my, my um, nonverbal cues. You can't see that online so it's really important for staff to understand you know how to respond to questions, how to how to do that. Um, we had a class on how to use WordPress. Really simple, quite honestly. Um, then we also do one-on-one -on -one where we ask people um, questions about, you know, along the lines of we help people, um, how to get back to your message. So if somebody comes to me and says, what does Live United mean? We actually, we're one of the 96% of United Ways who use Live United, but it's a very supporting message, so it's not our our main message, but we use it, so people should have to answer, you know, what that means. So we would expect them to go back to Live United means we help people and this is how we help them. I mean, we wouldn't want them to say we help people necessarily, but how do you bring it back to... Well, and Brian, for that, the staff was videotaped and so that it gave them an opportunity to, um, you know, gain some confidence, see how they looked on the video, mm -hmm. and uh, got tips from Christoph and his team as far as, you know, areas of how to keep it on message, that sort of thing. So, not just asking the questions, but being videotaped, that's something that many individuals haven't had that opportunity to participate in. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's really helpful. Any other questions? Yes. Did you develop the communications training on your own, or did you find resources? Yeah, so actually what we did, so I did some of the training at Source Media and we just kind of spun it off of there. Uh, it's actually on their website still. Uh, and I think it's training.sourcemgnews.com and you can actually, um, you can read it there. So I'm not gonna, you know, yeah. Training.source. Source MG News. Source MG News, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. So the um, video that you did today, where would it be possible to see that if you videotaped just this presentation? Uh, it'll be on just our website, United Way of East Central Iowa.org, and then if you go under news, it says marketing blog, so we'll put it on there. All right, well thank you very, very much. Thank you. Very